Hello and welcome to the shop. One of my boys is a die-hard Louisville Cardinal fan. He absolutely loves the University of Louisville. He's got Louisville shirts, Louisville jerseys, Louisville hats. His room is done in UofL. This kid, if you ask him today, where are you going to college? He'd tell you, the University of Louisville. Well, about a year and a half, two years ago, I acquired this blank from Zach Higgins, and it is red, black, and white, Louisville colors. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn a special little gift for my son. He's gonna get a Louisville Cardinal ink pen. This blank is made from a material called Alumalite, and that happens to be one of Zach Higgins' specialties. Now what I've done, I kind of looked the blank over, and I really like this in the best. And I've already drawn my line on there, and you can see I left a little bit on either end, a little extra. And I do that with acrylic blanks, because when you're drilling them out, if you're not really careful when you reach the end of the blank, you can actually blow a nice big chunk out. Uh, I hate it when that happens, but every now and then, you can't help it. And by leaving a little extra, you can always slide the tube one way or the other, and generally, you can salvage your blank, and that blowout becomes a non-issue. I'll be using the Palisades pin kit for this pin as well, so that means a 27th 64 inch bit. Now, I left a little bit on each end in case I had blowout, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect my blank, and I'm gonna look for the end that has the most interesting pattern, and I'm gonna start on that end. So if I have a blowout, it's down here where I have this more solid red area, a little less interesting, and that can be cut off. So we're gonna make the most interesting part the entry point for our drill bit. As I drill this, when I get close to the end, I'm gonna slow down and I'm just gonna make light taps with the bit. I don't wanna force that bit through the bottom of the blank because that will increase the chances of blowout. We're just gonna lightly let the bit eat away at the bottom of the blank until it slowly breaks through. That'll minimize the majority of the chip out. When drilling Alumalite or any other acrylic blank, make sure that you clear your bit often because what can happen is all of this material can pack up in the bit and that develops more heat and it can actually cause your blank to explode. Same thing can happen with wood. Always clear your bit as frequently as possible. Now I felt that bit go through the bottom of the blank and it felt really good. I did not feel any blowout so I have a feeling when we flip this over we're gonna see a nice cut at the bottom of our blank. I'm ready to barrel trim this blank so that I can go ahead and turn it. And this end shouldn't be a problem. You can see the tube is right up to the edge of the blank. But this end, see how deep the tube is? I had left a little extra material in case there was any blowout and I need to remove that material. I'm gonna start off by trimming it at the bandsaw and I need to know how much to remove. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another tube and I'm gonna slide it down in the blank. I'm gonna mark it with my finger and this tells me how much material to remove. So I'm gonna back off just a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and cut this slice off of the blank. I thought that I was recording and I was not. So I'm gonna go ahead and recap what just happened. I had this blank and I wanted to barrel trim it. This end of the blank looked pretty nice. The uh, tube is right up next to the end of the blank. This end of the blank, the tube was sunk pretty deep. Now you can see I'm right to the edge where I need to be but I took it to my bandsaw and I trimmed this little piece off. We're gonna put this aside. This will make a nice trim ring for a future pin. With this blank cut to proper size, it's time to get it over to the drill press and barrel trim both ends so that we can get it to the lathe and start turning.
My initial plan was to barrel trim this at the drill press, but I realized that I do not have a 27 64 inch barrel trimmer, the shaft for the barrel trimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my belt sander instead. With both ends of my blank trimmed, it's time now to head to the lathe. I've got my blank on the mandrel and ready to turn. Now one thing to bear in mind when turning a Lumalite, a Lumalite turns like hot butter. And once I get the corners knocked off and get it round, it's going to start giving off ribbons. And most of those ribbons are gonna stream straight back into the dust collector. Some of them are gonna gather on the bushings on either side of the blank. You want to pause frequently and clean those off because if you don't, if you cannot see your bushings, it's very easy for you to go below the bushings and ruin a blank. So take your time, clean often, and pay close attention. really happy with how the blank looks. It's got a nice fit at both bushings. What I want to do now is there's a few little ridges or tool marks along the blank. They might be kind of hard to see because of the darkness of the blank, but I can feel them with my finger. I'm going to go ahead and there's no sandpaper going to get used on this blank. I'm going straight to micro mesh. I was running my lathe wide open for the turning process. Now that the blank is turned down to the bushings, I've slowed the lathe down as slow as it will go for micro meshing. I'm going to get my pads wet and we're just going to work up a nice lather on each of the pads. You can see the slurry, it's really with the, with the pigment, it really looks kind of bad, but it won't hurt anything. We just rinse it off right away, and every, our pads will be just fine. I think the blank looks absolutely amazing. Uh, there are no visible scratches. All the tool marks are gone and the surface is like a sheet of glass. Now you'll notice it's a little hazy. Normally I would take care of this, or my next step would be to use a little bit of Plastex polish. But the other day when I first drilled this blank out and prepared to, to start turning it, uh, I had posted a photo either on Instagram or Facebook, I don't remember, and Zach Higgins saw it and he, he commented on the photo and I asked him, I said, what, what do you do to get the blanks to look so brilliant because they always they always seem to pop uh, when you show them on your on your Facebook page. And he told me that he uses a buffing wheel. Well, it just so happens that this Christmas, my folks got me an acrylic pen buffing system. I haven't used it yet, but I'm excited because I have the opportunity now to buff a pen. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna shut the camera off. We're gonna get the buffing system set up we're gonna come back and I'm gonna buff the very first pin. This will be the first one I've ever done and I'm hoping to get a shine similar to what Zach gets whenever he turns these pins. I've got my buffing system installed on the lathe and what we're gonna do is run the lathe somewhere between 12 and 1700 RPMs. I wasn't exactly sure where that was so I set my belts in the middle. There are five settings. I went in the middle on the top and the bottom so I think that should get me pretty close. 
we're going to apply just a little bit of this blue rouge to the tan wheel and we're going to buff the pin for about 20 seconds rolling it and rotating it to make sure we get the whole surface of the pin after we've done that we're going to bring it over to the buff off wheel and we're going to do the same thing for about 10 seconds to make sure we remove all of the residue from the blue rouge now i'm going to have my dust collector turned on for this because in the instructions it's stated that both of these wheels will shed when you first use this system and they recommend having a dust collector going to be able to remove as much of that from the air and the environment as possible so uh, it may be a little bit noisy but let's uh, let's get buffing one last thing I decided to leave my blank on the mandrel to make it easier for me to control that way I'm not holding the blank I can make sure I get all the way down to the ends and I don't have to worry about it getting jerked out of my hands. So let me get the dust collector started and we'll begin buffing. Wow, those wheels really did shed. Take a look at the blank. I think it looks pretty good. It's shadowed a little bit by the, uh, by the camera, but it really has a nice look to it. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process one additional time, uh, and that's just because I want to see what happens more than anything. I think the blank looks pretty amazing, but I'm going to repeat the process one additional time, and then we're going to get this pressed into a pin kit. I tell you what, I can't tell a lot of difference from the first application to the second application. It looks about the same to me. It just feels amazing. It's just absolutely just super smooth. Let's get this over to the bench and get it pressed into a pin kit. For this pin, I'm going to be using the Palisades pin kit. Now, this pin kit is amazing how simple it is to put together. You put the spring on the end of your refill. You place the refill into the nib. You thread the transmission. You can see how easily the ink retracts and ejects. We'll lay that aside. We grab our clip assembly and we're going to press it into the barrel of the pen. Before I do, let's take a quick peek. I want to look for, I'm going to put it on this side because I really want to show all the swirls. So let's put it on the back side. Okay, we'll get her started. I take a lot of grief for using this piece of cardboard. I've had people send me some nice little discs, etc., but I just haven't, I, if, if something works, I'm not really inclined to, to change, but I have been thinking a lot lately about uh, what I might do to modify this uh, little, little aluminum tip on our ram tip on my, uh, my uh, press. Once the clip assembly is pressed in, you simply take the nib assembly, slide them together, and you have a fully functional pin. I can't think of a pin kit that is easier to assemble than this Palisades. I'm really happy with how this pin turned out, and Zach was right, buffing does make a huge difference, especially with this heavily pigmented Alumilite. What I need to do now is present this pin to my son, and I think what I'm gonna do is something similar to what I did with my daughter. I've got a bucket. You can see it's empty, all except for one name. We're going to fold this name up. We're going to put it in the bucket. I'll stick it up here where he can't really see it. I'm going to bring him out to the shop and I'm going to show him. I'm going to say, Braden, I want you to help me turn a pin. I'm going to show him this U of L themed pin that I'm quote giving away to one lucky viewer. And when Braden Here's that, he's gonna see the pin. He's going to like the pin because he's die hard. I'll pull the bucket down. I'll have him draw a name out of the bucket, his, 
and we'll give him the pin. So it should be fun. Uh, I hope his reaction is uh, is good. I think it will be. So I can't do this tonight because he's already got his PJs on and he's laying in bed reading. But hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to get him out of the shop and pull this little prank on him and present him with this pin. You'll see it in just a moment. Okay, come here, Braden. All right, come here, stand right over here. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm, I'm doing a giveaway, okay? On, on what it is, I made this pen, and I'm gonna give it away to one of my viewers. I've got a bucket, I got some names up there, okay? And what I'm doing is, I'm doing, I'm doing a series of college colors. So you recognize those? You know which college that's from? Louisville, duh. Louisville, duh, that's right. And anyway, what I've got is I've got a bucket of names, and I want you to draw a name out of the bucket for me and pick the, the winner, okay? All right, hang on. Let me, let me get things started here. Ready? Okay. There we go. All right, just stand right Let's pull up just a little bit. All right, that's good. Okay, ready? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the shop. I'm out here with my son, Braden, and he's going to help me with the giveaway of my Louisville Cardinal-themed pen. Are you ready, Braden? Mm -hmm. All right, here's what we're going to do. Braden, I need you to close your eyes, and I need you to reach into this bucket... And I need you to pull out the name of the winner. You ready? Okay, here you go. All right, pull out the name of the winner. All right, did you get it? Yeah. All right, read the name. Wow. <laughs> did I get you? Nobody signed up. They heard it was Louisville. You're the only one who signed up. <laughs> what do you think about it? Wait. It's, just, it's a twist pin. Oh, okay. You like that? There you go. All right. Well, you said it was Louisville, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> but then I thought there were a bunch of names, because I thought it was another piece of paper, so I was like, oh, so this is for real? And then I picked it out, and I was like, oh. I can't outsmart you. All right, thanks a lot for helping me out. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Well, I think that went pretty well. He seemed to really like the blank. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Zach Higgins. Uh, I got that blank from Zach, oh my gosh, two or three years ago probably. I've had it for, for quite a while, and he does a great job with those three-color blanks. Whatever your favorite team is, chances are he's got a blank for you. That's about all I've got for this video. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody, and we'll see you soon.